All right, Pouring Nation, today I want to try a pour just like Sarah Taylor. She creates very earthy, beautiful paintings. A lot of them have pearl cells all over the place that are coming up through her paint. Usually there's a stark contrast between the colors and the background. I really want to create something like that. Now, I don't have the same ingredients that she has. I listed, and I will, I will link the, her video below, but I listed how she makes her paint her paints and I don't have the same ingredients but because I know what type of things in a pouring medium creates certain effects I think I can create something similar with just the stuff I have on hand so I want to quickly go through what we're doing here first of all the whole point of pearl cells is you lay down a paint that usually is very thin it is very light and airy compared to the puddle paint that you're putting on top the reason being is we want that paint to come up through or to create those pearl cells up through the main puddle paint. And to do that, we need to use a paint that is much less dense, much less um, thick, not much less thick because we want them to both the same consistencies, but we want that paint to be much less dense uh, than the paint on top. And how we do that is we use something like house paint. Now, I don't have the house paint she uses. She used Bear 7300, I believe, is the one she's using nowadays. But I have this Valspar semi-gloss finish, and I know that house paint is much lighter than most pouring mediums. Flood Floetrol, glue, Liquitex pouring medium. So that is part of the things. This is gonna help my base coat be light and airy. The second thing, because I don't have that satin enamel that she uses, I'm gonna use some of this DecoArt satin enamel. And that's gonna, again, help the, the base coat to be more light and airy compared to the puddle paint. Also, this soft body acrylic, while I don't generally recommend using this because it has some problems with uh, separating, we're gonna get to how I'm gonna get around that, but this is very light compared to, say, the Amsterdam paint. So we don't wanna use this, it's too heavy, it's not gonna come up through the paint because the pigment's too heavy. So we're using a lighter, uh, less dense, and less quality white paint. Now another thing that she has used is the uh, Apple Barrel White Matte Acrylic. And again, I don't have that, so I'm gonna use these two and my Valspar paint in place of those to make my base coat light and airy. Now, because I'm using lesser quality paint, I wanna add either Golden, Liquitex, or a little bit of both, as she does, to help uh, maintain stability. And the other thing that it does is once your cells create, rather than, I don't know if you guys have had this happen, you have your cells create and they kind of dissipate over time or they start to break up. Now using a uh, flow or a low craze extender like the GAC 800 or a very sticky high quality pouring medium like Liquitex, that helps us to, to keep that from happening too much. So, Again, we're gonna use all of these for the base. And then for the actual colors, we're just gonna use paint, Floetrol, water, and uh, probably a little bit of these just to make sure those cells keep their, uh, their size and they don't go all wonky on us. So the next thing we wanna do is I'm gonna use a big canvas. We're going 24 by 36. I am going to tape the back side. I don't normally do that, but I want to see how I like uh, having the back side taped and I'm going to use my big thumbtacks. And then as always, I want to make sure that it is level on my painting surface. And because this is such a big canvas, I need to figure out how much paint I need. So I have a calculator, which I'll link in the description below. And also I'm just going to show you how I do this here. I just get my phone calculator. We're gonna zero this out, and it's 24 inches by 36 inches. So that's the surface area on the top of my painting, but I still have the sides, so I gotta add 24. My sides are one inch thick, so it's 24 inches for each side, so 24 plus 24 plus 36 plus 36, because I have 36 by one on one side, 36 by one on the other side, 24 by one on one side, and 24 by one on the other. So my total is 984 square inches. Divide that by 25. So I need about 39 mixed 
ounces of paint. Now this is paint is going to be a little bit thin, not a little bit, a lot a bit thin. So I don't quite need that much. I could drop it by 10%. So um, 35, you know, 10% of 40 is four. So 35 or so ounces. And that's combined the base and the puddle paints that I put on pop. I probably want 60 or 70% base and 30% of the puddle paints because I really want the stark contrast between a white base and the color. All right, so as I told you, I need about 40 ounces of paint. I'm gonna make a little bit too much and I might not use it all. Uh, I want two thirds of that probably to be base paint. So I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna say I want about 25 ounces of base paint. And then about 15 ounces of color. So again, for her recipe for the base paint, it is two parts Floetrol, one part Artist Loft Soft Body White Acrylic, one part Apple Barrel, one part Satin Enamel, which is the house paint, the Bear 7300 house paint, uh, half a part GAC, and she uses a little bit of uh, Zinser uh, Paint Booster. I am not going to use that this time. So that means I need one, two, three parts. I'm only gonna do a half part of that, so three and a half parts. So four total parts. Now if I need 25 ounces, divide that by four, and it's just over eight ounces of, of each thing for a part. So that means I need 16 ounces of Floetrol. So we're gonna put this on. We're gonna strain this as we go. Now this is in grams, so it's about 30 grams per ounce. If I just do the easy math, it's 300 for the 10 ounces and then another 180 for the six ounces. So I need 480, give or take. And there's the reason right there you always strain your flow trawl. You get lots of little dried pieces you don't want in your painting. All right, as I was cleaning this out, I realized that uh, three parts would be eight. So eight times eight times eight is 24, close to 25. Again, we're not doing exact math here, but I need four parts. So really it should have been six. Six times six, or six plus six plus six plus six is also 24. So if I do six here, and I want two parts, so I want 12. So that's 300, but then I only want about 360. So we're just gonna pour a little bit back in here. I was thinking that looked like too much. All right, so it's a little bit less, but we'll be fine with that. So that's my two parts of Floetrol. Then we're gonna do one part of the Artist Loft Soft Body White Acrylic. Clean my lid here so make sure I don't get so that means I want six ounces, which is six times 30 is 180. So 350 plus 180 is 450 plus 80, so 530. And I have my satin enamel. I want about 90 here. So I'm gonna go up to 600. And again, this satin and owl paint is just so much thinner and less dense, I shouldn't say thinner. It's less dense, less heavy than regular whites like the Amsterdam. That's what's gonna give us our cells. And again, I want a half part of this. So we're gonna go another 90 or so. Now we're gonna mix that up. And you wanna mix this way more than you think um, because you have so many different pouring mediums in there. More mixing is better. 
And as you can see, this leaves a mound when it comes off on the big stick here, and that's way too thick. The last thing we need is, and water. Shouldn't say, I shouldn't say the last thing we need. We also need some GAC 800. I put about an ounce of that in. And some Liquitex pouring medium. I don't have quite enough GAC, so I'm gonna do, oh, let's just make sure this is dirt around. Another ounce or so of that. And again, that's to help the cells keep their shape after they, after they form. And to make sure we don't get um, the paint separating once it starts to dry because this paint's gonna be so thin. We don't need this anymore. But now we just need water. All right, so let me show you the consistency here after I clean up the side of my a little bit down here. So here's the consistency. If you notice, it's making a, as it's coming off my stick, and I am using a big stick, but it's coming off and making a divot and going away. I'm only raising it up about two inches off the ground here. So this is a very thin consistency. Almost like um, whipping cream. It's a little bit thicker than water, but thinner than heavy cream, kind of like whipping cream. All right, so I'm going to make one of these up. I have 30 grams of uh, Floetrol, give or take, in each one of these. And then I want to do about the same amount of paint. Um, one of these, I'm going to use the 24 karat gold from DecoArt. And I actually want a kind of rose gold, so I'm going to put a little bit of this golden fluid acrylic in there also. Yeah, I just have a rose gold there. Lighten that up a little bit. I'm going to do a teeny tiny of Liquitex. It's a nice little squirt. Maybe a tablespoon for two ounces. And you want to do water to get the right consistency. And I know um, Sarah recommends getting a pipette or something so you can do just drops of water because the consistency is very important in this type of pour. This is still a little bit too thick. One thing I want to do is I'm going to take the same utensil that I'm using here and check my consistency. Because again, the consistency is different based on the tool that you use. So when I was using that big, totally spilled here. When I was using that big, this big handle, it actually falls in kind of divots a little bit and then comes back. But in the case of this small, I got that way more than I thought I did. In the case of these small popsicle sticks, it looks different. So I always want to measure with the same, probably a 
little bit more too. Man, I have too much paint in here and I'm mixing too quickly, which I shouldn't do. That's more of what I'm looking for. And I'm gonna do a drip test once I'm done also, just to verify. So that's how I'm making my paints. I'm gonna make the rest of them and we'll come back. All right, so I did a drip test with my colors and the purple and the rose gold needed a little extra water, which I added. But this just ensures that I got the right consistency. This is a little bit thinner. Uh, but because it's on top, I think that's going to be okay, and it's one of the colors that I want to come out the most. So I'm not really worried about that. If I was, I would put some gel medium or something to thick it up, thicken it up a slight bit, but in this case, I'm not going to. All right, so let's see how my Frankenstein mix work. I did uh, take a little bit of my white and added a tiny bit of black to it. Um, it's a really cheap black again. You want to use the, the cheaper paints to make sure that um, you get the cellular action or the pearl cells that you want. I only added, you know, maybe a half of a teaspoon, but I just wanted some off, off white color to go with my painting. So again, this is that base coat that I made. I'll tip this all off later. So right now I just wanna make sure it covers. I don't know how much of this red I want, so we're just going to put a bit in and kind of decide from there. Alright. Let's see how well my Frankenstein pour works. So I gotta admit, this is not my favorite painting. But you know me, we learn something on every single painting. One, yes, I can definitely get pearl cells. Did I get them as big and as beautiful as Sarah Taylor did? Absolutely not, I need to work on that. Probably uh, two things I think I did wrong there. One, I don't think the paint was quite thin enough, uh, especially the base coat. Uh, two, the Rose gold was way too thin. So I think it is actually eating the pearl cells that I would have gotten because it's it's just too thick. If you can see where the where the main colors are, I got I got the cells just fine, but where the rose gold is, I didn't get hardly anything. Same thing here. Rose gold on the outside, hardly anything. Cells there, and I should have known that because uh, metallic paints generally need to be a little bit thicker than the rest of the paints to be the same and a metallic paint is really thin and it was I should have used just the gold color and not the metallic paint and I probably would have got a ton more cells from that I mean even here you can see where the color is I started to get some on the sides 